Hi guys, welcome back to the Sodcast. Um, I hope my lighting's a little bit better. Um, I don't know if any of you notice or not, but it's been way off lately. But I made some few changes and we'll see how it goes. Um, welcome to the Sodcast, where it's always 2.45, crime time. And it's only because the clock doesn't work. Doesn't mean anything. Anyway, welcome. I am Wendy Sod, your host. Today, I have a little short case for you guys. Um, I just thought it was kind of interesting. So when I'm looking for a case, what I do is I will um, kind of Google places that I've been, see if there's anything interesting. So three years ago, my husband and I went to Jamaica and we got married there. And so when I think about Jamaica, I think about white sand beautiful resorts, you know, beautiful beaches, and just paradise, and life is perfect. It's really not. Um, they have a really dark history, apparently. Um, so we are going to go all the way back to the 1700s. So this is the case of Lewis Hutchinson. He is the first recorded serial killer in Jamaica. So a little bit about Lewis. He was born in Scotland in 1733, and um, he ended up training in medicine, and um, it was kind of unclear whether he actually practiced medicine or just trained in medicine, because I've seen both. Um, I've seen where he was called Dr. Hutchinson, so I think he may have practiced in Scotland um, for a while. Then he immigrates to Jamaica in the 1760s, and there he buys a large estate and a plantation. And um, there he raises cattle, and he ends up building a castle on this um, land, and he calls it the Edinburgh Castle. Now, he would live there with himself, and 30 to 40 slaves he owned. Um, now it is by all accounts stated everywhere that he was very brutal to these slaves. He was not a nice man. He was just downright nutso, okay? So um, he was also known to be a thief cattle. A thief cattle? A cattle thief. Yes, I have dyslexia or, or whatever you call that when you say words backwards. I got a problem with that. Um, anyway, he stole cattle that were like strays from his neighbors or whatever rather than returning them. So he was just known to be the um, town's asshole. And everybody feared him. And I guess he was just a really odd guy. So where his castle was placed was between St. Anne's Bay and Kingston. And in order to get you know, to and from these places, you had to pass the Edinburgh Castle. Now, he was known to be an avid shooter, hunter, um, and very good shot at that. Um, so what he would do is, as travelers were going by, passing through to get to um, Kingston or back to St. Anne's Bay, um, he would take target practice. And he was shooting at anyone and everyone that went by. And he did not miss. He would take out multiple travelers passing by with just one shot. Um, other times he would go out and befriend these people and act like, well, hey, come on in, stop by here, rest for a while, I'll feed you. You know, we'll eat, we'll drink, be merry, and then I'll slaughter you. Um, because that's what he did. He would kill them, and then his slaves would later give accounts of what he would do with these bodies. And so I guess Mr. Hutchinson was um, part vampire because he would drain their blood from these bodies and drink it before dismembering the bodies. Then he would force his slaves to take the bodies back to a sinkhole, which was on the backside of the property, which was later known to be called the Hutchinson's Hole. 
and I guess it was like a um, it dropped down like 227 feet and they said um, that when that one of the slaves would throw one of these bodies down there he would just stand there and listen really intently as the body would drop and you know hit the sides and he just would have this really creepy smile on his face he just enjoyed every minute of his killings and Mr. Hutchinson later would say that it was just a thrill pill for him he liked to hunt and so that's what he did but even though he was very suspicious and very feared by all of the people around nobody ever did anything about it um there had been he had attacked one man another doctor in town by the name of Dr. Hutton, um, they had a beef, and Hutchinson waited for Dr. Hutton and his eight-year-old daughter to, um, he kind of ambushed them. They were out riding their horses, and he attacked Dr. Hutton, and um, Dr. Hutton was down for almost a year recovering from his injuries, but once he you know, regained his health back, he went into Kingston to report the attack to the authorities. And immediately, nothing was done. But they did finally get their sights set on this guy, and they were watching him. And, you know, they started noticing that in their little small area, a lot of people were going missing. And initially, you know, it, we're talking the 1700s, they thought, sickness, you know, was taking them out or, you know, whatever. But um, it turns out, no, that was not the case. It was crazy Hutchinson that was just taking target practice. So, um, the like I said, the authorities had their eye on him, but didn't immediately take action. So they were trying to come up with a way to, everybody was kind of afraid to go arrest him because he was this feared asshole and so they convinced a soldier British soldier by the name of John Carlton to go and attempt to make this arrest and um, at least bring him in for questioning so when John shows up on the property um, Mr. Hutchinson had caught wind that he was coming so he was lying in wait um, he takes shot at John and kills John with one shot now, um, Hutchinson knew that this was just going to bring down everything. He was going to get caught for all the other murders. They were going to, you know, come in and find all these bodies. So he tries to flee. And he goes to the harbor and he gets an altercation with this man that owns a boat and um, ends up strangling him and killing him and taking his boat. And he starts to row out into the water and the Royal Navy ends up capturing him and bringing him back. Now, they put him on trial and they found him guilty of killing John. Um, it was witnessed by many people, so there was no argument there. Um, they end up hanging him in the town square for all to watch. Um, and, you know... That was the end of him, which sucks because he was only held accountable for the one murder. But after the fact, um, they began to investigate and search his property and his castle. And they begin to talk to all of the slaves that were there. And the slaves are giving horrible stories of what went on. Um, they were talking about how... He killed all of these people and would drain their blood and, you know, just horrible things and the way that he treated them. Um, and during the search, they end up finding 43 watches, um, several pieces of jewelry and mounds and mounds of clothing that they would later link to some of the travelers. So it's unclear how many... Um, victims he actually had but I, I read in different places anywhere from 43 all the way up to 100 could be um, and there was also talk of other people um, men and women 
being involved in some of these murders. Um, not sure what that's about. Um, I do believe that they were questioned, um, but I don't think that they were ever held accountable in any of the crimes. So that is the case of the Mad Doctor of Edinburgh Castle. Now, one little fun fact, side note, if you're a gamer, which I am not, I hate video games, um, but I know that my kids, when they were younger, they used to play Assassin's Creed. I guess in Assassin's Creed, they actually have the Edinburgh Castle in one of the video games as a scene or something. So I don't know. There's that. Um, so that's it, guys. That is the short case of the Edinburgh serial killer. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's case, and I will see you on my next video, guys. Bye.